What would you say if I said that most of the fears that you go through are not even real? Most guys, most people, most women are going through fears that are not real. They are the fake fears. They are the ones they are, that are projected into the future. They are the ones that are anticipated. What is running your life? Are you someone that's able to notice? Are you aware that most of the fears that you are currently facing are never going to happen? Thank you guys for tuning in for my mix up video of the week. This is my first one of the year. And this one is on a topic that is very, very deep and real. So I need for you guys to settle in and really get real with yourself on what are the fears that you're really facing. And this is not just for women. This is in your entire life. What are the cause of your fears? See, fear exists outside the present moment, as you've heard me say so many times. Once you can start to look at fear in a very different way, fear changes. See, the fear that you're probably dealing with right now, or the fears that you're dealing with right now, is something that you haven't even experienced yet. And this tends to happen many, many times with people who are coming on this journey of self-discovery, being able to know, you know who they are as a person. They start to go through their life and go, okay, um, if I don't get this done, that means that this will happen. All right, fuck, man. All right, I got this. I got this talk tomorrow, so that means that. All right, and they and they and they're like, fuck. I hope I don't fuck up, and are constantly in the future. One of the ways that you know that you're in the future and you're dealing with fear that is not even real is impatience. Impatience is the want for something that is not currently attained, and I myself have struggled with this my entire life. So I have no room to speak on this. I've struggled so many times with being an impatient man. I've been impatient in all areas of my life. You know, whether it's, you know, these, these videos and, and the return on it, and whether it be, you know, when I'm going to see a girl and wonder, thinking about whether or not we're gonna have sex, thinking about, you know, where am I going to be years from now. Just impatience has just followed me forever. And it's because I'm so juiced up about learning. And you guys may notice this. You have a lot of impatience inside of you if you are juiced up about learning. If you're juiced up about, okay, what's the result I want to get? You know what? I want to get my life handled. What's the next thing for me to do to get my life handled now? And just like me, I hated the steps. I hated the, oh, you just gotta wait. You know, in time, things will start to unfold. I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't wanna think about this, man. I want it now. Instant gratification, I want it now. How many of you guys are struggling from instant gratification? Just wanting things, being impatient. Like, I need it now. If I don't get it now, it don't mean anything to me. I, need, I, I gotta get it now. I love this so much. I love talking about what fear is because I've had to deal with it so much in my life. And I've had to go on an internal journey, and I'm still on it, of course, and just discover what are the f cause of my fears? What am I fucking afraid of? What am I really afraid of? And in my video I've done a long time ago on look at yourself with honest eyes, you'll start to see what you're really afraid of hasn't really happened yet. It hasn't really happened. All these fake fears are just roaming around inside of you. It's just like taking you in a loop, in the loop, in the loop, and you're just going in a loop. Where is your current existent fear, existing fear? Where is it? What is it? Give yourself a chance to really think about it. You know what? Right now, I'm afraid that 
tomorrow at work, I'm going to try something new and it's going to fail. You know what? I'm afraid that when I go out and I go do this approach today or these approaches today, they're not going to go well. I'm afraid that when I start lifting weights, maybe I won't get the body I want. What are you afraid of that is not currently existing? Impatience. Wanting to just know right now. See, this is the beauty of this journey is that if you knew right now exactly what was going to happen, you would give up on a journey. I love how as men or, you know, whoever is watching this, we go on this journey to try to discover who, who, who are we really? But as we go on this journey, we want to know the answers right away. And as we don't get the answers right away, we start to get impatient. We uh, start to become very anxious. And as we start to sensationally and bodily feel these things that feel, that feel discomforting to us, we tend to just still stay in the loop. We want to stay there. We're like, man, fuck, if I just, maybe if I just think about it a little bit more, maybe if I just you know, ponder it a little bit more, and it'll never happen this way. It's constantly been like that for me. As I've talked to you about impatience, you know, it's been a life thing for me. And wanting things now has been a life thing for me. And still, as I'm going through life, I can feel traces of that coming up inside of me because I, you know, I haven't completely allowed let, let it go. And I allow myself to just sit in that tension of it. That tension of not knowing. That is the tension that most people are afraid to sit in, is the not knowing. Because if you knew that you would do good tomorrow, if you knew you would try something new at work, if you knew you would go do that approach, if you knew that you would go to that gym and you would get the body that you, would, that you really want by doing these certain set of steps, if you knew that, if you already knew like, okay, I'm going to get there, you would actually give up. The challenge would subside. You would be like, it's not a challenge because I know. You would, you would actually get quite arrogant about it. And the same thing is for me. I always wanted to know. And I was afraid of the not knowing because when you go on this journey, they make it seem like, and many people do this, they make it seem like once you set out towards something, man, it's going to happen. But the, what they don't tell you is that along the way, what you will have to move through to get there. They tell you, yeah, you're going to have to move through your fears, but they never really tell you that along that journey, you're going to have to move through the tension of wanting to know exactly what's going to happen. The tension of the not knowing. And I'm here to tell you that anything you're moving toward, anything that you want to notice within yourself, you're going to have to sit in the tension and love the tension of the not knowing. You have to understand that the knowing is the comfort. So that's why everybody really wants it. For me, every single time that I know something, it loses its charge. So let's say that I'm moving toward um, becoming a better dancer. Let's say I want to become a better dancer. But I already know like, what moves I'm going to do. This is why I don't like choreography, because when I know that I'm going to do the moves, it actually takes out the not knowing. And when it takes out the not knowing and puts in the knowing, I'm like, oh man, it completely loses its charge for me. So as you guys are really wanting to know always what's going to happen, who am I going to be, what is the result I'm going to get, understand that you are losing the charm. You are missing out on the beauty of not knowing anything at all. When you don't know, that's when everything has its charge. When you do know, that's when everything kind of levels out. And as it levels out, you start to move towards something else that you don't know. Notice the cycle that you're going through. The cycle is always, you know what, right now, 
I want to move towards this thing. But a part of you wants it so bad, it wants that, inst that instant gratification part of you that becomes impatient, wants it so bad that then you start to yearn for it. And then as you start to yearn for it, you go, oh my God, okay, is, is this going to happen this way? Is it going to happen like this? And let's say that you just got the answer from somewhere and it was like, God it just gave you the answer, like boop, that's what's going to happen. You would actually stop moving towards that because you already know. So anything that you know, anything that you expect, anything that you like, all right, I know that that's going to happen already, immediately it stops having the juice that you want from it. Because you're already like, oh, okay, I know that's going to happen. So why would you ever want that? Why would you ever desire that for real? Become okay Fall in love with the not knowing. This is the thing that I have to do. Because trusting the unknown is very difficult for anybody. Trusting yourself is very difficult. The reason why is because once you start to trust something that you actually don't know, that's, that, that you don't know, oh my God, it, it, it's, like, it's like falling off a cliff and just believing that you're going to hit something that's off at the bottom. You're like, oh my God, all right, I hope that I hit something soft at the bottom, and then you just jump. But imagine if you already knew you were going to hit something soft, along the way you would be, you know, you'll want a cup of tea in the air, you'll be like, oh my God, yes, and you'll just be relaxing in the air, you may even fall asleep. So many things may happen, but if you didn't know, wow, that adds so much amazingness to it. I want you guys to become masters of the unknown, masters of the not knowing. Because once you become a master of the not knowing, which means that once you trust that what you're moving toward, what you want to become, what you're striving for, is going to happen, but you don't know how you're going to get there. Oh, talk about energy. Talk about motivation. This is what starts to replace all the impatience. This is what starts to replace it. You start to get this feeling of, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that something will. And I don't know exactly what's, what it's going to be and how it's going to happen, but ooh, fuck, I want this. And that's what I'm trying to put in your soul is to let go of the fake fear, the fear that's in the future. The fear of wanting to, if I don't know right now, fuck, I'm going to just, oh my God, I'm going through it. <sighs> Relax into, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know. You know, I'm scared. I don't know how I'm going to get there. But the thing I can lean on is that I have the energy to do it. I know that I have the wise to do it. I know that anything that I want, it can happen. It's been proven by others, so I know I can do it as well. And that brings me to, what is the real fear then? Is the real fear right now in the moment? Hmm. No, the real fear is in the past. These are the real fears that you're dealing with. If you don't believe me, look within yourself. What are the real fears that you're actually dealing with? All of my fears that I've had to deal with, everything that I had to move through, all the tension that I had to come to terms with and I had to sit in, all was something that stemmed from the past. Or, like I said before, from the not knowing of what's going to happen in the future. But the ones that really made an impact on me the most, the ones that were completely the for real thing for me to experience, that I actually moved through, all stemmed from the past. I would say 90% of them. The other 10% was in the future. I had to learn to sit with that tension. But everything else, mostly every single thing that I had to move through, and I'm still moving through things that, that may show up inside of me, is from what happened years back, moments ago, 
what's outside of this moment before. I want to tell you guys that the fears that you're dealing with right now, it stems only many of the times from the past. And I want you to start to dissect this with me. Look within yourself and go, what am I dealing with right now? The for real thing. Not the thing that I believe that, oh my God, I hope that don't happen. Not the fear that lies in the future, but the real things that are living inside of you, the real energy blocks that are inside of you, the real things that are, that are clunked inside of you somewhere that you need to now let go. Let me give you an example for me, something that stemmed from the past that I had to learn to let go. Expectation on others. I would say around 15 or 16, I started to move into starting putting expectations on others because this made me feel comfortable. What made me feel comfortable is if someone else could live up to the expectations that I was also living up to within myself because I know if they did that, I wouldn't have to adjust to them. I wouldn't have to deal with their bullshit. I wouldn't have to be around them and feel uncomfortable. Because I've always set myself high standards in life. I've always been a person who wanted to move towards something, who wanted something big, who wanted to live out this life in a way that was very different. And as I was starting to be, you know, become a person who was very different and I actually always felt like I was very different. I wanted only those people around me who had high expectations for themselves or I would press that upon them. <clears throat> and I remember having friends around me and women around me and I would be pressing upon them things. And for me, that was just like the way to go. I'm like, okay, I'm moving towards this. You got to catch up, man. You're going to have to do this. And I would always try to pry at them in little ways and be like, hey, man, let's go work out. And I knew that he was a person who really didn't have the motivation. And he actually was a person that I shouldn't bring into the gym because he was just going to bring me down the gym. But I would just do it because I'm pressing on him the expectations that I have for anybody around me. And I would be talking to women. And I had, you know, girlfriends when I was in high school. And the expectations I would press on them would be them to be their best selves. And I would want them to always want to be unique and always want to try something, you know, different. And I wanted them always to, at the time I was a Christian, I was a hardcore Christian, so I wanted them to just wait until marriage, which didn't work. But I was just constantly pressing upon them expectations that I was setting myself to. And it was hurting me, man. On the inside, it was actually hurting me. I thought it was doing good, but it was hurting me every step along the way. That's why every woman I grew up with, every guy that I grew up with in high school or younger, I have no childhood friends or have no high school friends or well, have a few but I actually really don't talk to them so I really don't have any it's because I kept pressing onto them a certain way they had to be for me to accept them and what I was really showing them or showing myself is that I'm not willing to sit in the discomfort of somebody who doesn't have the same expectation that I have on myself because it's, it's a discomfort that comes with it I wasn't ready for that. I didn't want to deal with that. I'm like, either be at my level or have the high expectations I have for myself or leave. I don't want to deal with you, man. I really don't want to be around you. And I would look at them in this judging way and I would have these kind of judging ways of being where they would, you know, say something and I would kind of comment on it and they would always feel like the answer is not good enough. And I would do the same thing to myself, and it was all things that I was dealing with with me, but I was always projecting onto people, live it up, live it up, live it up, be high expectations, be high standards, because I was always doing it to myself because everybody around me wasn't doing that. I felt like everybody around me was kind of just coasting through life, and that made me do that. That made me kind of, no, that made me not do that. That made me not want to just coast, because I always wanted different. And there's nothing wrong with me wanting others to be their best selves or wanting others to live out a life that's true and real and, and satisfying and unique to them. But it was at the detriment of real relationship. It was at the detriment of real love. It was at the detriment of having a true friendship or a true friendship. 
And I look back, and how do I know that I, I was dealing with this? This year, I was in Malta, and you, that video I made on dealing with insecurity, self-doubt, and confusion that I made this year, and I was in Malta with my woman, I was sitting at breakfast, that was a hard time for me. And the main thing that I learned from that was letting go of expectation on others. Because I was pressing that onto my woman, and that was one of the things that I didn't know that I was upholding, and I had to let go. So what did I have to let go? I had to let go the fact that sometimes the people you love the most, sometimes the people you want in your life, they're not going to be moving at the pace you are. They're not going to be always living at the standard where they're just like militant like me. They're not going to always be like that. And if I keep pressing on them to be like that, they're going to walk out of my life. But they're not going to be there in some way. And when I let that go, what a relief I had, man. What a relief. I had to sit in that tension of it. And at times, I had to keep sitting in the tension of it. And, to, and today, fragments come up about it, and I allow myself to just come back to my body because I trust my body. And I trust if it comes up inside of me, I can sit with it. I can focus into it. I can allow my breath to just sink into it. And I can feel it as a bodily sensation. And I'll allow it to pass in the way that it may. That's real pain. That is real fear. That is something real inside of you. That is something real inside of me. That was real for me. That was a real thing. But as I learned to just let it go and just relax into, I just want others to be as they are. And I love them for that. Everything started to change for me. So I want you guys to understand that as you've dedicated your life in some way to learning and becoming something, you're gonna have to move through the real fears majority of the time. All your attention and your energy that's focused on what is gonna happen in the future, you're gonna have to allow that to be as it is. Trust that what you're doing is gonna move you somewhere. Trust that somebody has done it before you. Trust that even if somebody haven't done it before you, you will find a way. That is the only thing I can say with this, is that you must learn to trust yourself. Trust what you're going to do. Trust that what you're going to say is stemming exactly from what's true for you. And if it's stemming from what's true for you, how could it not lead you somewhere that you want to go? Start to move through the real fears. Start to locate them. Locate them within your body, because that's where it exists, in your consciousness. So a lot of the times, you're thinking to yourself, OK, I got to move through this fear. And you're trying to mentally figure it out. You're going, all right, that's the thing I fear. I breathe. Breathe. And at some point, it goes, and you think you're all over it. You're like, oh, fuck, I'm all done with it. Or let's say that you see a girl. Usually, I don't like talking about this, but this is one of the things that you guys are definitely on a journey for, is learning how to move your fear for women. Let's say you see a woman, and you're feeling all these body sensations that's making you go out of whack. And you're like, breathe, all right, I can just. And you, what you're doing is that you're trying to move away from it. But I ask you, and I dare you, to move into it. Don't move away from it, move right into it. Which means, wherever it exists in your body, go to it and sit right in it. Sit right in it. Experience what it feels like. When you see a woman, a lot of times what's happening is that you're dealing with past fear and future fear. The future of, oh, you don't know what's going to happen, so it scares you. The past fear of, maybe a girl a long time ago, you tried to tell her something and she completely blew you off. Maybe you had a girl in your life where you expressed your desire and she shut down, and so that made you shut down in yours. The one that's really going to affect you the most and really have a strong impact on you going to say hello to her or not is the past fear. 
that's going to have the strongest effect. Because you have to realize that at one point in your life, you wasn't afraid to go talk to a woman. You wasn't afraid when you were a little kid to go just say hello to a girl. You was not afraid when you were younger to go speak to somebody you didn't know. That is conditioned over time. So all these past conditionings that you have inside of yourself that's built fears, that's built blocks, that's built closure inside of yourself, you're going to have to learn how to go to those places as they arise. As a body practice, because this always comes back to the body. Real fear exists in the consciousness. Consciousness lies here. So it's in your body. It exists somewhere. It can even be stored in joints. So allow yourself to move to, or even muscles, move to the part of yourself that feels scared when you feel it. When you're in, when you're in a situation that's new, feel the part of yourself that has, that has real fear, that has real like, oh my God, I feel scared. When you're in a situation that you've been in over and over and over again, and you're like, fuck, this situation just scares me so much. Or being in front of people and really stating my opinion scares the shit out of me. Because I've done that before in the past and somebody told me it was stupid and it made me feel so bad so I don't want to do it anymore. What I would say is, and I've made this amazing video about this, called uh, fear, fear Exists Outside the Present Moment, so you need to start trusting the moment more. I want you to start to look at what are a few situations that I can look at so I can start moving through the real fears inside of me. Let's say that one of your real fears is you are afraid of expressing emotion. You're afraid of expressing softness, expressing tenderness, expressing love to family members. Maybe that's what it is. Because remember, this is a holistic change that I'm taking you guys through. Let's say that's what it is. So you are around your family and you're like, fuck, man, I'm just, uh, Tony said to fucking start expressing it, but where do I start? I would say the first thing is, is start just by allowing yourself to sit in the tension of the part of yourself that wants to express what you really want to express, like the tenderness you want to express. When you're in front of your family, sit in that tension of what do I really want to express to my family? Because as you start to change in this journey, You'll notice that you have all these things that you want to start to move past and let go. And maybe one of them is expressing t uh, tenderness to your family. So you're in front of them and let's say your sister, your mom, your dad is there. And you're like, you're not, you guys are not used to expressing it to each other. Notice that you want to change that. But you don't press onto them to change that. You first change that within yourself. Maybe they'll find it weird at first. Maybe they actually will re 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 completely reject what you're doing. When they completely say no to it or they completely feel weird about it. But it's not for them, it's for you. Sit in attention of whatever you want to express. Let's say that you really want to tell your dad that you love him. But you're not really used to that. Or you want to hug your, your family members. Sit in attention of that. Sit in attention of it. Start out with that first. Let's say you want to go hug them and you start to feel all these, you start to sweat, you start to get nervous, your heart starts to raise, let's say your fucking stomach starts to get butterflies. Just deal with that first. That's your first attempt. Remember, this is a stepping out. I don't want you to just jump straight in. This is a stepping out. Then the next time, let's say that you just will go up, let's say the next time is that you feel that and then you just walk over and you just say, hey, What's, what, what are you doing right now? Or what are you watching? Or can I have a piece of that? Or whatever it is. But you're filling the part of yourself that wants to tell them that you love them. And let's say the next time you look at them in the eyes and you can feel that part of yourself that wants to say that and you sit in the tension of it. Remember, it's always sitting in the tension. That's the beauty of it. Is that once you start to sit in the tension of it and you're going step by step, it starts to break down. So that means that each step, the tension gets less and less, but at the same time, it heightens. So it's like, it, it heightens, but as you start to move through these situations, your relationship to tension, if you keep wanting to sit in it, it'll actually become better. A lot of times people have a bad relationship to tension, so when I tell them to do stuff like this, it's very difficult because they're trying to just do the thing. I'm like, you gotta step it out, man. If you just do the thing, you're gonna fucking freak. <laughs> step it out. And let's say you get to the point where you've done that enough times and you just say, Dad, I'm, 
And you just go in, you just give him a hug, and you feel so fucking weird about it, and your body is just going all off, and he goes, what are you doing? And you feel, oh my God, he fucking is rejecting me right now. I just did all this shit, and now he's rejecting me. Sit in attention. I say, I just wanted to say that uh, I love you, and I wanted to give you a hug. And experience that while you're in front of him. Let's say he turns like, okay. He's like, it's weird. Or whatever. Or let's say that he gives it back to you because he's been wanting that as well. You never know what's going to happen. But until you move through that real fear on the inside of you, that real pain that's on the inside of you, you'll never really want to, you'll never get the change you're, you're looking for in this journey. This journey is incredibly difficult in many ways. It's not just about the finding the internal journey so I can fuck more women. If you want that, you're going in the shallow end. You are. Because you will get many results, but you won't ever experience real happiness. I mean, true peace within. True contentment in the, in the core of who you are. Learning to move through the real pain that exists on the inside of you is the way to go. And trusting in the not knowing is the way to go. It's been my journey to consistently move through the things that I'm afraid of. To consistently find out what is the next thing that I can let go so I can have more love. So I can experience more with my woman. So I can experience more with you guys. So I can experience more when I'm coaching. So I can experience more just in my body alone. I hope you guys took a lot took a lot out of that. You know, as I was thinking about it one day, I was like, what is the fears that we go through? Cuz I'm actually really fascinated by it. Because I know that once we allow ourselves to let go of these things, we start to enjoy ourselves more and then we start to move into a different peace within ourselves. But I've been very very stimulated by this and excited about what it really is to allow people to be free. You know, I feel like as I hope you guys, you know, I'll completely just keep finding things within myself and keep sharing it to you guys. So I want you to look at the anticipated fear versus the real fear. Or I like to call it the fake fear because it's not really real. The real shit is on the past. I hope you guys got a lot of this video. You know, um, my cranking out five videos a week and four videos a week doing coaching is the way I want to go. I'll be doing this for a long period of time, I feel for a good period of time and you guys keep tuning in to my videos and if you want to do coaching with me skype coaching one-on-one -on -one coaching or with me and the tnl team go to the naturallifestyles.com go to the contact page put in an inquiry because we are on a well, i'm on a mission specifically of course to help as many men as i can so the more you guys who want coaching the better my life becomes because it's my mission until next time, I want you guys to enjoy your lives and go out there and start to see what is the real pains that I'm dealing with, what are the real fears, and start to move through them in the way that I've taught you here. Build your good relationship to tension and watch how you become more at peace on the inside. Until next time, I'm in.